was a reminder for myself. Ana abdukul ajisu da'ifu miskinu zalim wa jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. In these days of difficulty, alhamdulillah from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and from the tongue of awliya Allah they grant us a najat, a salvation and a means, a means in which to reach to Allah's satisfaction. This uh, I'm here myself, this is an immense blessing to reach to our Lord's satisfaction and this is the blessings of tariqat. They described last night that to come to Islam is to come to submission and the only thing and the most important thing to submit is not our cash, not our property but the dearest gift that Allah has given to us of our free will. That's the greatest gift that you can give your Lord back. Some people think they're good and that's a gift <laughs> that they pray and that's a gift and they've given money and that's a gift. There's nothing in comparison to what Allah wants from us and that's called the religion of Islam. And the religion of Islam is not a noun, it's a verb. But people are treating it like an, it's a noun, it's a thing. I'm an Islam, I entered this thing. No, it's a verb, it's an action. For you to actually have entered Islam, then you've agreed to take a path in which to submit your will to the will of Allah give it back. And that's what we say is something ancient in all holy books, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want the kingdom of Allah to come into my heart and I want it to be on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven there is no disobedience, there's no your opinion, my opinion, our opinion, it's only but Allah's opinion and everything is of a singularity in the heavens, everything is in taslim and submission. This material world everything is of a free will, at least we have the perception of a free will. And so the greatest gift only Allah are teaching and inspiring within our heart, give back your will to us, to Allah and only at that time of, I'm going to give back my will to my Lord, is your Islam a real verb and action. Otherwise it's a label like you put upon your shirt of a designer label and you walk around with some sort of a label. But it's not an action until you accept within your being that I have to submit my will to the will of Allah it's not my money, it's Allah's money. It's not my home, it's Allah's home. It's not my property, it's Allah's property. It's not my family, it's Allah's family. It's not my children, I do what I want with them, raise them how I want. But they're Allah's and I'm merely a custodian. So then the perfection of submission is to acknowledge, I'm but a custodian of your properties and your goods, Ya Malikul Mulk. And that's what the awliya have on their structures, Ya Malikul Mulk. He is the king of all mulk and dominion is all under Allah There is no minor king to a greater king, we are but servants to Allah So that's our goal is to reach to Islam in which I submit my will to the will of my Lord. Then Allah describes in Qur'an is then come and fulfill your covenant. Give your allegiance 
so that your hand reaches the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and then Allah's hand is above that hand. So what we said is Surah Al-Fat, 48th Surah, 10th verse and Surah Al-Fat is all about Prophet So the 10th verse is what? Al-Fat Indeed those who pledge allegiance to you Ya Sayyidina Muhammad they are actually pledging allegiance to Allah And we have many naat on just that one section of Ayatul Kareem that it became clear for Arifin that Allah attributing the hand of Prophet to his Divinely hand. That's why then you respect Prophet not like any other man beyond anything that anyone can understand because Allah didn't say that about anyone. But telling his companions and those whom understood the Qur'an of the jinn and ins and anything in between, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَيِّعُونَكَ يُبَيِّعُونَ Allah. My hand is the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad Take that hand and never leave that hand. And Allah described for us and they actually are pledging allegiance to Allah So the bayat is to Allah The connection is to Allah And He's describing the only weight in my hand is the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad If the hand of Muhammad is not upon your hand, you have no hand from Allah upon you. لا حول لا حول ولا قوة There is no help and there is no power to you. Everything that is reaching to you is from your imagination and from shayateen. So people cannot claim that they are receiving a power from Allah because Allah is describing that to take the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and by taking that hand it's actually my hand, my qudra, my power and everything that it represents is on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad the hand of Allah is over their hands. So he who breaks his word and breaks his covenant, it's not word, his ahad, and he who breaks his con- covenant with Allah breaks it to the detriment of his own soul. And he who fulfills his covenant with Allah is promised ajran azim, an immense reward an immense reward. So the baya is a mandatory, it is Islam and without it there is no Islam. Without the baya there is no Islam and that's all that shaitan wanted to do was to pull the power from the most powerful religion. So make everybody to think they're in the masses of Islam because these are the days of jahiliyyah and that they don't have a hand to the hand of Allah And they think just by, by their prayers, their zakat, their making hajj that they reach to the hand of Allah And Allah is clarifying in the verses of Bayat that, no, that your hand has to be upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad Only at that time Allah's hand is over that hand and that becomes their Islam. Only by that hand 
and by the hand of Prophet upon them, they're now on a path in which to submit their will to the will of Allah back. And they took that path to reach to what they pray, they promised Allah of a covenant. Their ahad is a covenant from Allah What did you promise Allah on the last to be rabbikum maqalu bala on the day of promises in which i said i'm your lord he also told you what your promise would be and we said bala and we came onto this earth with a mission from allah it was not a tour bus in heaven where they asked you want to go down you want to go down and we said okay i'll, I'll go this time you were sent with a purpose from your heavenly station and reality with a purpose upon this earth. Allah gave you the purpose, we said, yes and we came onto this earth. And the purpose on, on this earth was to fulfill that covenant and the ahad, the, co the covenant, the contract with Allah And when Allah want to guide them and make their Islam real, inspires within their heart find the tariqahs because they are the ulul amri minkum. They are the men whom they follow Atiullah, they understood that the obedience of Allah for Atiyah Rasul is only Sayyidina Muhammad is the only one who can follow Allah and that Allah gave them a rahmah and a mercy. Well, Ulul Amri minkum, that these Ulul Am, their hands are upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad they exist on this earth for people to fulfill their covenant. And as soon as they take the hand of these Ulul Am, they're now attached and these are now all Ayatul Kareem in Qur'an, Bihablillah, the Farq hold tight to the rope of Allah and don't make faraq, don't make schism and schemes and separations. All of these verses are a description of this bayat that hold firm to their hands. As a result of holding their hands, now you're on a path to Islam. You can't call yourself Muslim without bayat. What make you to be a Muslim? You're not somebody submitting your will to the will of Allah If you're not in the tarbiyah of shaykhs and teaching you, otherwise what will are you submitting? You say, I accepted Islam, I go for Jumma and I do anything I want, I mix and match whatever I want. So what was Prophet The teacher, his companions were what? The students. And then the companion of the ca companions were tabi'een, were tabi tabi'een and what we call wajib al-taqlid, mandatory to follow, mandatory to follow. If not following there is no Muslim, there's nothing that you're submitting, you're, you are just following your own desires. So they come, the tariqahs come and are teaching real Islam. In a day when the tariqah is shown as if it's fake Islam and the other crazy people are doing everything right. So where in this is all logical? Where is it that you accepted Islam, you go for Jummah and you do anything you want? Because who's your scholar, who's your teacher, who's teaching you right and wrong? Who's giving you continuous dars that this is not right, this is right, this is wrong, all of these lessons. What hand did you reach? Did you take a bayat and did you reconfirm once you landed upon this earth your pledge of allegiance? And you've pledged allegiance to everybody but Allah Anyone who's been naturalized understands that. We came to Canada to become Canadians, they take you before judge, Ghari and then they say, put your hand on your heart and say, yes, do you pledge allegiance to, to the Queen? 
in this country you pledge allegiance to the Queen and to uphold her laws and, and British laws and, and the, the way of the Queen? And you say, yes. And if you go to the other side of the, the border, say, pledge allegiance to our flag. You pledge allegiance to our flag and you say, yes. So for dunya Allah is showing us everybody has to pledge allegiance. You can't be in any mamlikat, you can't be in any country unless you've pledged allegiance to them. Otherwise they're wondering, what the heck are you doing in our country? If you say, no I don't pledge allegiance to you, so yeah, okay, back to the other side, they throw you into Mexico, they throw you across the border. So why then Allah is showing that? So how in dunya can it be mandatory? But the Muslim world forgot about it. No, I don't have to pledge allegiance to Allah I am… I accepted Islam. So, no, you didn't accept. You merely accepted to come into the religion but you don't have faith. You haven't taken even the process. And that's all the shaitan wanted is to pull the energy of the nation in which they are an empty hollow people that have no power, no authority and no value. Your life is less than 25 cents in value in their eyes and they kill you like they kill the, the flowers. And they kill other people, oh the whole world will shake if you kill one of them. They'll put them on television and every power and authority will tell you, how you did that? Because they have value, why? And Allah wrote the plan. Because Allah is teaching us, you have no value to me without your hand on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And I'll make the whole world to realize you have no value to me. And that's why I, oh, every Muslim, oh they kill us all, all the time. They kill us and they don't say anything on the nose. Well who wrote this? Who put this on this program together? Didn't Allah write everything? Isn't Allah giving us an example? You have no value to me. Unless your hand is on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And if your hand is on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad I will shake and tear down this entire earth if they come after you. But without that hand, ooh, you're like all the other rubbish, let them take them and throw them out. What's the value? The value of insan is his allegiance to Allah and his allegiance is only if he is accepting and put his hand upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of that hand Allah then gives on the verse we recited, that's not a small action. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَيُّنُكَ يُبَيُّنَ اللَّهِ يَضَ اللَّهِ فَوْكَ إِذْنِهِمْ It's not something small because then Allah is describing, if you break that oath, it's to the destruction of your soul. And if you uphold that oath, means you kept on your path, you kept through all your difficulty, you kept through all your trials and tribulations because Prophet described your Islam will be like a hot coal. If you're on a path that's really connected, of course your life is going to be continuous up and downs, upheavals, every type of testing, every type of question. You come into tariqah and your whole life will flip upside down, nothing the way you like it because that's testing. Allah didn't give it to you to be enjoyable, wanted to see how much you're going to cry at night, how much you're going to be patient, how much you're going to, to be patient with every type of difficulty and that's Islam. And Allah ajran azim that they kept their hand, they didn't release their hand to the hand of Prophet There may be shaykhs that come and go and do inappropriate thing and the hand will still be to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad It's not an allegiance to a man on this earth but these shaykhs are just a means in which to reach the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So many, many people will be with someone who is, is of a hypocrite and bad nature. Doesn't mean you're stuck with that. That was a means in which to reach the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of holding that hand, these trials and tribulations come, these difficulties come and Allah says, if you pull and break it, you're in destruction of your soul. 
because I wanted for your soul its realities and I guided you to Islam and only those whom Allah guides are truly guided. Lihadan Allah. There is no guidance, hidayat from Allah unless Allah guides. When Allah guides, He sends you to what's called a tariq. He sends you to a path because everybody says, what's my path? Allah gives now in Qur'an the tariq, the tariq, tariqah is in Qur'an. So when Allah wants to guide someone with love and guidance, He says, go I want Islam for you but I want real Islam for you, go find these ulur am and inspire within your heart, find my tariqahs, find my paths. And the whole of tariqah structure upholds and keeps the way of Sayyidina Muhammad so what's the first thing they do? Everyone tells you, oh you met the shaykh, go take bayat. Why? For entertainment? But no, this was the real Islam. That your hand has to be on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result, now you're on a path to improve your soul. And if you leave it, you're at the detriment of your soul. Why? Because of the, the greatness of that path that Allah is describing. That this way of Islam and what I'm going to reward you of immensities, you can't comprehend it. So when He says to the detriment of your soul, doesn't mean, oh you mean Allah going to punish me and rip me to pieces? No, but can you imagine a day when you open your eyes on Yawm al-Mashar and you don't achieve what Allah wanted you to achieve. You broke your hand, your hand from that reality and Yawm al-Mashar you see Prophet all the way at the front and you're at the back of the line because you broke your hand from that reality. This is not enough for eternal crying. And then find out that the station in paradise Allah showed you, this was your station is going to be. But you broke your covenant. Now this is where you have to be. Doesn't require a beating, requires seeing, look at what I was about to give to you. And you took onion and garlic instead. I offered you of the abundance of the heavens and you took from the onion and garlic of the earth, you took the lowest of what I have to give to you. And that's a sadness, that's an immense sadness. And Allah is describing for us, Adl al Adim, you don't understand what you're about to achieve. Hold tight, keep going. This is the lifeline of that reality of Islam. Imagine a nation in which they had bayad with Sayyidina Muhammad Could people be killing them for a 25 cent bullet? Slaughtering them in hundreds of thousands and not a single person say anything? Taken out like rubbish. No, because they have no bayad. They have a, no value in Divinely Presence. Their value is their love and ishq for Allah and the only real love and ishq is the love for Sayyidina Muhammad that love entered the heart, that insan now has a value for Allah Because imagine when it doesn't have that love, it's filled with just filthiness of dunya and filthy understandings and that has no value for Allah If anyone ever asks a question, we can go deep into that. And we described last night their Islam without that is not real. The first pillar of your Islam is your testimony of faith, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluhu. Nobody completed that, they didn't witness Allah How can you testify to that which you have not witnessed? And you can't testify even to the reality of witnessing Sayyidina Muhammad So of course their Islam is not real. It's completely invalidated. But as soon as they took bayat, then Allah makes their Islam to be real, right? Because most likely your bayat is with the Muhammadiyoon, wa ulul amri minkum, and the light of Prophet is them. And when you've seen them, you have seen Sayyidina Muhammad as Prophet described to his companions, if you've seen me, you have seen Allah. If you've seen me, you have seen Allah. 
because the companions are above darajat. Anyone who looked at Prophet ﷺ, he is the Hadith Al-Qudsi, that his eyes are my eyes. I see through his eyes, I hear through his ears, I speak through his tongue, I move through his hands and I move through his feet. That Hadith Al-Qudsi is Allah describing Allah in Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. And so Prophet ﷺ described to his companions, if you've seen me, you've seen Allah You've seen these lights. And these lights definitely have seen you. And that's why Maqam al ihsan pray and worship as if you have seen Allah So companions also Allah by seeing Prophet And if not, no Allah seeing you. So every time the Prophet looked at them, they knew Allah is looking at them. And that was the moral excellence of their character and the immense reality of Sayyidina Muhammad so it means then the whole fulfillment of the deen, the power and its reality is in the bayat. And so then this holy month is Surat al-Jinn. And then what does Surat al-Jinn guide for us? Was what? Verse 16, Surat al-Jinn inshaAllah. Allah min ash-shaytan ar-rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir raheem. وَأَنَّ اسْتَقَامُوا عَلَى الطَّرِيقَةِ لَأَسْقَيْنَاهُمْ مَا أَنْ غَدَقًا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ بَلَقْتَ the Rasul Al-Kareem اسْتَقَامُوا فِي الْتَرِيقَةِ الْتَرِيقَةِ When they say this tariqah is not in Qur'an, they don't read the Qur'an. اسْتَقَامُوا فِي الْتَرِيقَةِ And this is in the month of Shaban. Because the nine by the eighth month is the secret of seventy-two. And Allah is describing, keep firm on your tariqah. Because we just described, Allah warned about the bayat the same thing. Hold firm to your bayat and don't break it to the destruction of your soul. And then Allah is describing, istiqamu fi tariqatat. Keep your feet firm on your path. And that you do have a path, it's not the, not in the Qur'an, it's very much in the Qur'an. And that if you keep firm to your path, I will shower you with oceans of abundance, provisions of abundance, everything of abundance will be showering upon the one whom is firm upon their path. Because tariqah comes as a, in the time of jahaliyyah that Prophet described in the last days as when I came in the times of immense ignorance, so shall my grandson when he comes the nation will be in a second jahaliyyah. As if we're in the time of Prophet and everything is corrupt and crazy and the few they're being told by the masses, they're wrong. But those few whom hold the reality called tariqahs, they're actually the right. And in this time of mass jahaliyyah, the masses are doing wrong, not the tariqahs. The tariqahs are not innovating but they kept the way of Sayyidina Muhammad They are the preservers of Islam. They are the heart and soul of Islam. And as a result, Allah istiqamu fi tariqat, keep firm on your tariqah. And that is the way towards all these realities, these fountains of abundances, all these blessings and all these dressings to dress upon the soul. Means then in the last days, these become the source of immense power where it seemed to be something small and a few people came up with these ideas. No, they're just the handful of people that Allah is guiding in the last days. The few that will represent many and that's why it's a symbol of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Why? Because in that time of Jahaliyyah Prophet described, follow my companions, they're like stars. 
on a dark night. Meaning what? In this ocean of immense ignorance and dhulam because night in this hadith is a zulm. So it can be also read that in the zulm and oppression, follow my companions they're like stars. So what do you think then in the last days? In the zulamat and oppression of darkness everywhere, follow these lovers. They are like the companions, they are filled with light, they're like stars. It's meaning that the abundance of people is going to be dark and only a few hold the reality of light and the shine for others to come to the light. Not the masses and the j huge jamaas would be shining lights. They entered into oppression, they lost their light, they lost their ability to connect, they lost their connection to the heavens. And the tariqahs that seem to be few in number but hold an immense reality from Allah So that people can reach to that hand, reach to their oceans of power, reach to these lights and these dressings and these blessings that will bless the soul and dress the soul and that oceans of abundance to dress upon them, bless upon them and at that time they're on the path of being a Muslim as they struggle in their life to become a Muslim. And the only way for them to be a mu'min is that they first became a Muslim and they submitted, they took a hand, they took a path now, a connected path. And as a result of that path these muhibeen and ashiqeen they tell you what? Love Prophet more than you love yourself. If you love Prophet more than you love yourself means now Allah will grant within your being a light and that becomes Nurul Iman. Nurul Iman is an event, it's not something you just declare and saying, I am a mu'min because my dad said I'm a mu'min. No, you're not a mu'min until a light entered into your heart, you witness that light that light dresses you and you love Prophet more than you love yourself. But the hand has to be there because this qudra and energy has to be flowing to you. Without a hand you're a, a beautiful lamp with no plug to electricity. So imagine a, a warehouse filled with beautiful lamps. But not one of them is plugged into an electrical outlet. What happens? It's dark in there, they're not lit. There are a whole bunch of lamps talking and thinking they're all lit up, they're all lit up, we're amazing lamps, we're lighting the whole universe. Excuse me, you have not plugged into anything until you take the bayat. When they take the bayat they're reaching the power line. Then they turn on, they're lit up and as a result lights are emanating from them. They're now mu'min. When they have the light of belief and they struggle and struggle and struggle so that they can witness the reality of Prophet then they become mukhlas because Allah granted them ikhlas with ikhlas in their heart and sincerity that Allah signed off on their heart that they loved Prophet and they love Prophet more than they love themselves, Allah must sign off on them that they are sincere and I make them to be mukhlas because that's Allah's gift. And then what happens in mukhlas? Allah tells shaitan you have no more anything to do with them. You make them dirty, you bother them, I clean them. You bother them, I clean them. That's not your game, not your business. Shaitan said, I'm going to hit all of your believers and Allah said, no I wrote the program actually you're not going to hit all, you cannot come after my mukhlas. Why? Because these are Ati Allah, Ati Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum. They became the men of authority whom their love and their sincerity been signed. And that they are connected individuals. 
and that their hand is upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah's might and majesty is upon them and that becomes their luck and energy and power that reaching to them. As a result, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله علي العظيم that all hawla and help and madad reach to them and quwwa from the heart of Prophet immense oceans of energy moving through their hearts to reach to their hands and to the heart of those individuals. And that becomes a connected community and a community connected to the Divinely Presence. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us in these days of difficulty Ya Rabbi where all shayateen everywhere and everything that we see on TV of, it, of realities is coming real, of Qiyamah coming real, Armageddon coming real. We pray that Allah grant us ikhlas, grant us these lights, grant us these blessings, grant us the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.